Spiritual Warfare Know Thy Enemy The Origins of Evil Spirits There is a war, and it is real. There is an unseen reality that many Christians ignore or simply refuse to acknowledge. However, the Bible clearly describes our very first adversary. In Genesis 3.1 it says, Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? So we see that the war began in the garden and has not yet ended. John 10.10 says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. You need to understand that the enemy wants to attack you. He wants to deceive you and afflict you, oppress you, and discourage you. The enemy will lie to you, ultimately, in an attempt to steal your salvation. But who is the enemy? Ephesians 6.12 says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Evil spirits have come to make war against us. In Luke 7.21, Jesus cast out evil spirits. In Luke 8.2, Jesus cast out seven evil spirits from Mary Magdalene. And in Acts 19.11, we see that even aprons and handkerchiefs that were touched by the Apostle Paul were used to cast out evil spirits. Evil spirits are biblical, and they are real. The Origin of Evil Spirits In Genesis 6, we see human beings increasing in number on the earth, and daughters were being born to them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of these humans were beautiful, and they married any of them they chose. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward, when the sons of God, or the fallen angels, went to the daughters of humans and had children by them. They were the heroes of old, the men of renown. What does Nephilim mean? The etymology and meaning of the name Nephilim is very interesting. As a noun, it comes from Nephil, which means a bully, tyrant, or a giant. But as a verb, Nephal means to fall or be cast down. So the Nephilim were the offspring, the bullies, tyrants, and giants from the fallen angel. We find a great amount of information regarding the fallen angels and the Nephilim in the Book of Enoch. The Book of Enoch provides extra biblical details on the era that preceded the flood. In its expository retelling of several events, the book offers an etiology or origin for certain, or perhaps all, evil spirits. I believe Enoch should be taken into consideration. In the New Testament, the book of Jude, Jude 14 through 15, it says, Enoch, the seventh from Adam, prophesied. So right there, we see that Jude knows that Enoch is an inspired writing because he says Enoch prophesied. See, the Lord is coming with thousands upon thousands of his holy ones to judge everyone and to convict all of them of all the ungodly acts they have committed in their ungodliness, and of all the defiant words ungodly sinners have spoken against him. This is almost a direct quote from Enoch 1.9. It says, Enoch, a righteous man, whose eyes were opened by God, who had the vision of the Holy One and of heaven which he showed me, Behold, he comes with the myriads of his holy ones to execute judgment on all and to destroy all the wicked and to convict all flesh for all the wicked deeds they have done and the proud and hard words that wicked sinners spoke against him. Here we see almost 
an exact quote, word for word, in Jude. And interestingly enough, recent discoveries of the copies of the Book of Enoch among the Dead Sea Scrolls found in Qumran prove the book was in existence before the time of Jesus Christ. These scrolls forced a closer look and reconsideration of the Book of Enoch. It has become obvious that the New Testament did not influence the Book of Enoch, but on the contrary, the Book of Enoch influenced the New Testament. Enoch 15, 8-12 says, Now the giants, Nephilim, who have been begotten from body and flesh, will be called evil spirits on earth, and their dwelling places will be upon the earth. Evil spirits proceed from their bodies because they are created from above, their beginning and first basis being from the holy watchers. They will be evil spirits upon the earth, and will be called evil spirits. But the spirits of heaven have their dwelling places in heaven, and the spirits of the earth who were born on the earth have their dwelling places on earth. And the spirits of the giants who cast themselves upon the clouds will be destroyed and fall, and will battle and cause destruction on earth, and do evil. They will take no kind of food, nor will they become thirsty, and they will be invisible. And these spirits will rise up against the children of men and against the women because they have proceeded from them in the days of murder and destruction. So here we see Enoch describing the fact that because Nephilim were a hybrid between the spiritual and the physical, that there was no place for their spirits to go in heaven because it says heaven was for the spirits of heavenly beings. So the spirits of the Nephilim are actually still residing on earth because there is no dwelling place for them at this time. So we know who they are. We know that the evil spirits are demons. We know that demons and evil spirits are the disembodied spirits of the Nephilim, which were a hybrid between humans and the fallen angels. You are vulnerable if you don't know the enemy. 2 Corinthians 2.11 says, We are not unaware of Satan's schemes. And I want to end with this. Sun Tzu, the author of The Art of War, says, If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself, but not the enemy, for every victory granted, you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Stay tuned for part two, how to fight the enemy. God bless.